Our heritage begins in a country called Somalia. Somalia is situated in the Horn of Africa, also known as the ancient land of Punt and the nation of poets. Somalia lies along the Gulf of Aden and the Indian Ocean. It is bounded by Djibouti in the northwest, Ethiopia in the west, and Kenya in the southwest. Somalis have been in the UK for more than 100 years. The first Somali immigrants were seamen and merchants who settled in port cities shortly after the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869. This was in Cardiff, Liverpool and London. A number of former seamen served in the Merchant Navy and Royal Navy in the Second World War, Falklands War and other conflicts. Since the civil war in Somalia, the UK witnessed influx refugees from Somalia. There's a large Somali community in UK and it is estimated around 150,000. A number of them are now British citizens. It is estimated that currently over 8,000 Somalis live in Cardiff, Newport and Swansea areas, making them the largest ethnic minority community in Wales. We spoke to a few experts in this field to find out more about the migration of Somalians to the UK and the older and younger Somalian generation Hello, in our community about their experience of migrating to the you. UK. I would like to start by asking you what is your name? My name is Alessandra, but everybody calls me Sandra. I'm Italian by birth. I was born in Venice and uh, my husband was from Brava. We were married for 40 years. Unfortunately, he died two years ago. And he took me to Somalia when I was very young, I was 23, and I lived in Somalia for about 20 years. My name is Mohammed Sharif Mohammed. Mm -hmm. I'm a Somali. I worked on Somali government. I reached higher positions in the government, in ambassador, and uh, I became also an ambassador for the Arab League. I served them uh, in so many countries, including uh, Senegal, Kenya. I worked also in Tunisia. The last uh, post I held was to be the head of the mission of the Arab League in uh, Rome. And now I'm living in Britain. What inspired you to study about the history of Somalia? The first thing is that I looked for books. But there were very, very few books, the history of Somalia. I found books about East Africa, I found books about uh, Arabia, but there was nothing particular about Somalia at that time. It's very frustrating if you are trying to uh, clearly see the history of Somalia. Also because, as you know, Somalia was divided between the northern part, which was under British administration, colonialism, and the southern part, which was under Italian colonialism. And uh, they had uh, practically, the two governments had no, the scholars of uh, British scholars and Italian scholars had no contact whatsoever, no connection. I was interested in history and uh, the fact that I could not easily get uh, the history of Somalia, not even of Brava, which interested me in particular, was uh, baffling to me and uh, spurred me to to learn more. Because I like history in general. It gives you insight to what is taking place in the world. And another thing, it is an exciting uh, subject uh, to study. I had to study the history of Somalia because it is my country. So it is part of my culture, my being, my political awareness. And to understand the present, the present, you should know the past. So I think it is a must of every Somali to know about the history of his country. Um, well, when I was a student, I was interested in what's called anthropology, which is the study of the different lives and customs of different peoples, and I wanted to find a particular people to specialize in, and I just happened to find a book which is about Somalia, and I thought this lo these sound like interesting people. So I went to my teacher and said, I want to study the Somali, so that it really started from there. On and off, I've been studying the Somalis ever since. Not all the time, but some of the time. Could you speak Somali? 
Uh, yes, I speak some Somali. Uh, in here, I have Somali, I have Somali, I have Somali. Before, many uh, Somalis settled here in Britain much, many years before the war because they used to work on the on British ships. And when they uh, uh, arrived at British port, some of them left the ship and settled here. But uh, st even those... Uh, you cannot say that they never went back to Somalia. They were, their ties with Somalia were always very close. They had relatives, they had uh, their people there, and they, uh, they could. There was nothing that prevented them going and coming back. So we said that Somalis came just after the Suez Canal opened, so from 1870s, 1869, possibly, so 1870. And so, so your grandfather, great great grandfather was being part of that first, very first generation of Somalis who came, right? But the question is, how many women came then? And the answer is, how many you think? About 100. The answer is zero. Okay, right? Zero. So it was, it was all male migration. So it is male workers, they do not have the right to bring their families. These are, these are migrant workers who could come who, who do a job and so on, right? They can stay and work, but they did not have the right to bring the marriage between a Somali man and a Somali woman happening in uh, South Wales in the first one in the UK, happened in 1970, 1971, something like that, 1970 something, early 1970s, the first. So Somalis had been here 100 years before any Somali male married a Somali woman here. So most of the generations that had been here were mixed until recent Somali history of refugees and people. Very interesting. Would you ever have believed that the Chinese uh, ships arrived uh, in Mogadishu and in Brava in the 15th century, all the way from China, and that they, they took people from Somalia and took them to China for a trip and then they brought them, took them back? It's extremely fascinating, you know, the details of the history of, of Somalia. Well, before the war, Somalia was a lovely place to be. Uh, it's a beautiful country, and uh, Mogadishu is a, is a beautiful town. It used to be very quiet and very safe. Uh, of course, during the time when Siad Barre, President Siad Barre, was dictator, it became dangerous for people who. Uh, were against him politically. A lot of people were in prison. You've been Somali. How did you find it? Somalia? Yeah. Uh, Somalia is a very beautiful country. Uh, it's beautiful. It's not soft. It has nothing soft, like England. No beautiful lawns, nothing green. It is very harsh, uh, very dry sometimes. But uh, it is... Uh, if it is very special. Uh, the scenery is special. Uh, the sea is extremely beautiful. Uh, the Indian Ocean there and the very large, uh, beautiful beaches, you know. Do you still want to go back to Somalia? Yes. Yes, if Somalia becomes a uh, good situation, so we are going to, to go to Somalia. And the last time I was there was in... 1996, but that was during, that was after the war, um, and the situation was rather dangerous, so it was a bit weird. I had to go around um, in a car with a couple of young men with guns to look after me. And before that, I just walked around the town just normally. So I think, I'm afraid, the reason really behind the war was greed and desire for power. How did people migrate from Somalia to other places? People migrate normally, they get visas. People mig mig migrate because for to make business, to study, for tourism. But uh, they are migration also, which are, which come from political reasons such as the migration which took place after the war. People uh, go abroad for refuge. And the international law 
give these people the protection they need in order to arrive safely in the, in the countries of refuge. Of refuge a lot of people try to get to the Arab countries in these terrible small ships which they're, um, they're overcrowded and sometimes they sink or the people are thrown into the water. Um, or some of them try to get by boat, to overland and by boat, but a lot of people also come by, by plane. Unfortunately, I didn't choose to leave Somalia. We were forced to leave Somalia due to the civil war that was going on. It's due to the civil per uh, persecution that's happening, and in order to save our lives, we had to flee Somalia. 100,000 Somalis have fled their homes this year alone. Many found shelter in what has become a massive shanty town outside of Mogadishu on the road to Afgoy. Oh, because there are problems what's happening in Somalia, we left to Somalia. Can you please explain the similarity and differences between Somalia and England? The similarity is, first of all, we are all human beings. We have the same uh, sufferings and aspirations. Yes. There are so many. First of all, Britain is in Europe or in Africa. Secondly, they are Christian, they are Muslims. Thirdly, they are well developed. We are not uh, highly advanced uh, in every field, and we are not to be compared to the stage of progress. And also, it's quite nice to see the street, clean street, where the roads were organized, cars, I've seen many cars. Normally, I wasn't used to seeing that many cars. And funnily enough, Right now we're sitting in the school where I came from. I studied in this school, Copperswood Primary School, and in this playground is where I used to play oh. football. But it was like coming to a new place, meeting f people, different people from different country who spoke different language to me. So how did you feel with the surrounding around you? Initially I was quite shy because I didn't know anyone and I didn't speak the language. But after time, because I, I got to know people and I got on, to, I got on well, and I have to thank my head teacher. She was she really looked after us. So you made lots of friends. I made a lot of friends, but also the, uh, the our head teacher looked after us because she knew that we came from a foreign language, uh, foreign, foreign country, and spoke foreign language, and she tried to help us to get involved easier and settle in so much easier. We can do a lot. The big changes in the world have been made by people who have the willpower and the vision to change their life for better. In the diaspora we have Somalis in their millions who are well uh, educated, well talented, uh, have the experience and the expertise to change the life in uh, their country. Currently I work as a medical practitioner, I work in hospital as a doctor and it's something that I wanted to do when I was young and I have to study hard to achieve it. I have to, I have to ask, do my primary, uh, secondary school GCSEs, A-levels in a five-year medical degree. So is going back to Somalia any of your plans? To be honest with you, I'm always a person who likes to get back to their origins. So I would, would like to go back to Somalia as a holiday and find out and, and look around where, I, where my people lived, where my house was, and look around the area and explore some more further. To change the life in uh, their country. As you know, all those who have been educated, who are professionals, who use to produce, to make uh, life function in Somalia, have lived already in Somalia. So, by the expertise and the education and the talents they have, they can change and rebuild their country and make it modern, safe, prosperous in the interest of its people. Love each other. First your parents, your neighbor, your sister, everybody. Don't take other things. Love each other. Love is more. No interfere other people if you want to save your life. Pray, read him. So just your religion.